Have you heard the concept of white hat versus black hat SEO? Maybe you saw all the spy versus spy. Do you remember those guys in the Mad Lib um, magazines? Well, today we're gonna talk about how is it that I can tell the difference between black hat and white hat. And we're gonna reveal the biggest misunderstandings of those two different ways to do SEO and which one is gonna get you ranked and which one is going to get you banned. Black hat SEO versus white hat SEO. What the heck do those mean? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Black hat, when I first started in this industry, when the dinosaurs walked the earth, is there was all these guys that would rock around and they were the black hat guys. And they had the magic formula to skip all the work and get ranked anyway. Well, those days are long gone and white hat is really what is left over. Black Hat was like, oh, I'll buy a bunch of domains, put duplicate content on all of them, and I'll rank for all these great keywords before Google finds out. This is really big in like the pharmaceutical Viagra space. <laughs> this was where it worked really well. So some of the Black Hat techniques that I saw was of course, they would do duplicate websites versus one time site with content that grows over time. Duplicate websites, all the same content, that's a no-no. White Hat is one website with multiple sources of content, blogs, social shares of those blogs, images that match. That's what a one-time unique content website should be like. So some other Black Hat techniques was buying links. Man, do they have some Russian link companies that were making a fortune off of selling backlinks. And then of course, if we could buy a .edu, that was the gold standard of linking. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy a .edu link, or I'm gonna buy a .gov link, or whatever I could find that had a, a more authoritative domain. So you can't buy these links. It's almost impossible. They would create a dummy websites and then have people link to these dummy sites. That was a big no-no. However, linking, on the other hand, is a great thing to do if it's organic. Organic meaning I wrote some kick-ass content and people are loving it. They're liking it, they're sharing it, they're commenting on it. That's how you get those links. So remember when you're doing day-to-day -day activity as marketers and as business owners, don't forget to ask for the link. So if someone is featuring you in a magazine, get a link from their online site. If you are being featured as a speaker at a conference, get a link back to the site. If you are a columnist for Inc. Magazine or Fortune, get a link back to your site. Always be thinking about who is using my content externally that could link back to my website. Very, very important. Now, a lot of time we steal images and we don't even know it. And what I mean by that is we'll take images off of random websites or we take images off of Google Images. Now, a lot of people think Google Images is free. Oh, look, all these images, they're for me to take. Hey, you could right mouse click on any of those and download to your computer and you're off and rolling. What's happened is that Getty Images owns all or just about all of the stock photography websites. They have this infrastructure of pages and sites so they can hunt down anyone who takes an image and uses on their behalf. So one of my clients got dinged $10,000 for one image that was on a website for two years. Now they settled out of court and that's the game they play now is they hunt down people who have used images that are theirs they own and then they penalize them for that. So never ever steal any images off of Google images specifically. The next thing is always to make sure that you are buying images you're going to use for commercial purposes especially. Pixabay, Unsplash, and Canva.com all have great free images you can use and that they've been validated as being free so you're not gonna get in trouble for using images that you don't have the copyright or the royalty rights for. So think about how can I, if you're just on a budget and you need to get good images, don't take them from Google Images ever. Don't steal them off of anybody's website ever. And always be thinking about what other resources can I use to be the most findable images online. Do not ever think that you can do black text on a black background. No one can see it, therefore it makes it more findable. 
Unfortunately, it's a very risky move. Google knows about all of these deceptive practices. That's why they're called black hat. You really want to stay on the white hat side. Create content people can see. If it feels deceptive, it is deceptive. And don't ever buy anything that creates false authority for your website. Don't buy links. Don't buy any kind of images that are not yours. Make sure you're not stealing off other people's websites. Follow the white hat rules. Google will reward you in spades. So please take my advice on this. Never follow any black hat strategies. If it feels wrong, it is wrong. It's a great way to get yourself banned by Google. I tell you, getting back in good favor with Google is nearly impossible. Do it right, follow the rules, and you can become the most findable business online. Black hat, white hat, it's all very confusing as a business owner. I get it. So remember that if you subscribe to our channel, I'm committed to breaking down these very geeky, intimidating topics into something that is easy and digestible for you as a business owner. There's a very small margin between success and error online. And I want to make sure that I give you the express pass to only think about the good stuff that's going to move the needle for your business online. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you get notified of my new videos every day, Monday through Friday, because I am super committed to making sure that every dollar you spend online equals a dollar that you make in your bank account.